Hi, welcome to this Will I Have Enough uh, video series. Um, in this first video, uh, I'm going to be doing the scenario where I have uh, 10,000, it doesn't matter if it's dollars, pounds, sterling, etc. But I have 10,000 today, and, and I'm trying to figure out how much will I have in 10 years. That's a very basic scenario. It'll depend on um, uh, how you invest the money, how much risk you take. But I think what I want to illustrate is I want to get away from this idea that I have a certain amount now and I'll therefore have a, an, an, another amount in the future. In reality, uh, you there will be a range of outcomes and you need to think about that range to determine what uh, risk level is appropriate for you. This, uh, this video series is based on my earlier video series where I built in a, a financial spreadsheet entirely from scratch. Um, it'd be probably very useful for you to check out that video series because then you can understand how this model works and how all the numbers fit together. And it's frankly far better than you banging numbers into a financial uh, software package or somewhere on the internet uh, where you don't really know how it all, how it all works. Here you would. Um, my name is Lars Croyer. Uh, I'm a former hedge fund manager who has written a couple books about finance. Uh, and I'm now doing these videos as a hobby. I, I'm not a financial advisor, so before you do anything I uh, say in this or in any other video, um, do your own work, take your own advice. Um, but in any case, let's get uh, let's get uh, straight to the spreadsheet. So here we are back at the model again, and like always, I want to start by um, making a couple of minor adjustments since we've now gotten to the point where we're really using the model as the as the base for uh, creating different use scenarios, I want to just sort of ready it for that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have the numbers you see I'm in, in, in E15, I have the numbers up here not not be so um, uh, varied. You can build that in and I'd encourage you to do that, but just for the purposes of now we don't, um, we don't uh, need that, oh sorry. Uh, there you go. So zero. I just didn't need to make these all these decimals, um, and then have this zero. So that's the first thing I wanted to do. The second thing I wanted to do, instead of having these numbers sort of be jumbled up here, let's just have them all be start maybe zero, twenty five, fifty, seventy five, hundred percent. So this is the allocation we're making to. Um, um, the the minimal risk assets as opposed to the to the equity allocation. You'll obviously see the numbers here change quite substantially. The last thing I want to do is I want to make this not a percent of total contribution because that gets messy. That we have to have numbers down here, but just make it percent of median if median assets. Let's call it if active like that and then it's a symbol calculate that divided by that copy that out like that and now we can go down and delete this um so now i think that the model is 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 uh, we can recalculate again obviously we changed some major inputs we didn't expect um growth in the in in any more in the contributions or, or indeed in the spending and we eliminated all risk of the contributions and spending um, so uh, obviously the output numbers are going to be substantially different if you want to see what it's like with fees we can simply copy this down so this is the passive you can see here there's no extra fee so we do edit pay special uh, values like that and then we go up here and we say 1.75, which is the standard uh, we use for um, uh, uh, when, we, when we do uh, um, active management fees. So we copy those median numbers now. We do edit, pay special, and values, like so. Um, and you see, wow, it's still a good number, isn't it? So that basically, what this is saying is if you contribute ten thousand a year and you spend ten thousand in retirement um, at age ninety, you would have one point five million uh, in the median scenario if you had passively invested your money, which I highly recommend that you look um, look to do. Um, I made some videos on that if you um, if you're interested. Um, and if you had indeed invested with active management, it would have been nine hundred twenty three thousand. The difference is six hundred and fifty. Thousand, uh, which is, means it's seventy-one percent of your active 
um, the median assets in the active case would have, have gone to fees. So it's crazy, but but there you go. So now I think the the model is is ready to um, to be adapted for for this scenario. So let's I'm gonna do save as um, and then say call it uh, money in ten years scenario. So that means now we can sort of butcher the, butcher the model without really worrying about uh, what happens to it. So the first thing is to do is go and unhide these cells, these rows we have here. Format row um, unhide. Um, so if we want to do 10 years, it's not, um, let's just call it age 10. Um, so this is the 10 year scenario. So now the number we want to work on is this number right here. So the, the cell we connected to is this cell, because that means that's the number that we be running multiple times. We can then delete all the numbers down here. We no longer need any of that, so delete all of that. Um, then we can delete the annual contribution. We just want to figure out what will 10,000 become in um, in all those years. Um, why did that? Oh, let's recalculate. Um, so there you go. Um, and then this should no longer say savings at ref, that should say savings at 10. So there you go. So that's, I mean, that took what, 30, well, I'll call it a minute. We no longer, <laughs> we don't need this. The K guy is a ref, we don't need that anymore. So, so, so this is sort of it. I mean, that was how quickly this model was was adapted. I mean, it, it it's really so we've gone from this retirement scenario where we put money aside every year and take money out um, to basically asking a simple question, which is, so say someone comes to you and says, how much money will I have in 10 years if I have 10,000 now? And, and I think it's wrong to say, um, oh, you will have X. You will have, if you believe these assumptions, almost for sure, or virtually for sure, 10,166 in 10 years. Um, but other than that, this is, um, this is the better way to answer the question is to say, well, if you invested all in equities, which is uh, this scenario, you will in median case have 13,000, um, but there'll also be a big range. Um, and depending on your, we can do a recalculation again, depending on your um, allocations to between equity and, and debt, you'll be able to, uh, to, to see the range you're getting. What we can go down here now in, is to see uh, the scenario where, um, let's do this, where the, the increment is, um, call it 5,000. Um, and there you see the the out the different the bar chart shows you how many instances it gives you a good idea you can make this into percentages instead of numbers but this gives you a good idea of the spread it's very very volatile um which is pretty interesting let's just say you go down here and this cell here you say oh, how many times will I actually have above ten thousand so let's do that so that's oops ten thousand. Uh, recalculate that and you go back up here. So now it says you can see the cell here. This is the number of times you're above 10,000. So you start with 10,000, you put a bunch of money in equity, you put all equities, it's very volatile. Um, in 64% of the cases, you will have, end up with more than 10,000. Um, you're also going to end up with a lot more in the, in the average case, the median case. Um, but um, but it's uh, but it's 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 pretty interesting stuff. So we very simply made the model into something quite robust. And and you, again, you can just go down here and see the spread. And um, if we wanted to make it not ten thousand but one thousand, you just change that number. And there you go, you recalculate. And now you see the same thing for one thousand, or you can make it for for two thousand five hundred, whatever whatever you want. It's super simple to change. So, so there you go. Now this is answering the same question, but just I start with two thousand five hundred. Um, and what will I have in ten years? And here you, the answer to which is if you invested all in equities, here's your answer. I think a better way to perhaps look at it is to say 
instead of saying you'll have a median this, I would say you are have 90% likely between, to get between uh, X and Y. So here you have the worst five, so if you make it the best five, also, so you go down here and make that 95. Um, so now we have the, if we calculate, so basically what I would say is, you would say, well, if you invested all in equities, um, you are 90% uh, likely to be between these two numbers, which may not be very helpful, but it gives you an idea. Oh, so we still have the 2,500 case in here. So uh, let's just recalculate with the 10,000 case. So this is the answer. You are likely, 90% likely to be between the two highlighted numbers. If you had done 50-50, it'd be between these two numbers. So, you know, if this seems, you know, one common reaction to looking at these numbers, um, by the way, I haven't updated this, but you can do that yourself. Um, but one common feeling here is to look at these numbers and say, this is far riskier. There's a far broader distribution than, than I had expected. And we got to be careful with these models that they're only as good as the numbers we put into them. Oh, by the way, we should probably rerun this with zero. So I am telling you, don't do, don't do active, do passive uh, management. So I'm going to, you know, always have this at zero, it should be zero, don't do active. Um, but one of the common themes here is that people assume the distribution is far bigger than they had expected. And you got to keep in mind, 25% standard deviation is high. And I think it's, you know, um, yeah, I've talked in other videos about fat tail, so the thing that unlikely bad things happen more than expected by the standard deviation. And we're uh, not building that into the model, but sort of fudging it by making the standard deviation higher. If you you had this standard deviation be fifteen percent, for example, you would see you see these look at these numbers as I recalculate. You'll see they're a far narrower range, um, which just really reflects the the assumptions you put in. So you got to be very careful with what assumptions you're working with. Um, I actually think that there's an argument to be made that uh, that. In, in reality, the, the spread, um, the impact of uh, bad markets will impact so many uh, facets of your life that you, um, you know, like your house, your job, and, and other assets, that in reality, it's probably a good thing for you to realize that a broad range of outcomes is indeed possible. Um, we don't allow, I haven't allowed yet, um, other asset classes to be added to this model. I think it, it, it frankly um, makes the model too complex. And also you, you'll introduce issues of correlation that I don't think is easily answered. Um, certainly not in this model, but also not in the financial industry in general. Um, but I think what this model is trying to do is enabling to ask, um, ask the right questions. So if the numbers here look funny, go check it out. Go have a chat with a financial advisor about it. Um, it's also super easy to amend. If your period is not 10 years, but 20 years, you just add 10 years down here. Um, do it right now. Um, we insert a row, and then we do that 10 times. And then you copy this. Like that. Then we hit 20. Uh, no, we need to add one more. So insert a row. Copy, copy, and paste. So now it's at 20. So there you go. So this is instead of 10 years, it's 20 years. So, so you know, see, it's super easy to, to amend the model. Let's just do all of that. Um, uh, so now we're back here. Um, so there you go. So now we have amended the model. Again, if someone asks you the question, I have 10,000, what will I have? in 10 years, you tell them, well, depending on your allocation between equities and cash or, or, or minimal risk assets, your median will be these, this range of numbers given these assumptions over here, um, and your range will be these numbers. And this is the number of cases where you will have above 10,000. And as you take more risk, you'll make more, but you'll also have more scenarios where you fall short. So I hope that's been interesting, um, and, 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 and I look forward to building more uh, cases for, for a uh, for future um, video. So thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting and useful. Uh, as always, I'd appreciate feedback if you think I've done something horribly wrong or there's stuff you don't understand. 
Um, you can subscribe to my channel if you want to hear uh, uh, future videos in this or um, uh, series or, or other topics. Um, but in any case, I hope to see you back on the channel in the future.